Hello everyone, how's it going? Dr. Incompetent here, and let's resume our complete beginner's guide here in 2022 to Tales of Magile with our Dwarven Bulwark in the second floor of Rechnor, ready for the third. Let's go with our friend down the steps using the greater than sign, or just clicking on it. Okay, now, this is always super helpful. Before you go down the steps, like we've seen before, the game stops you. And I'm looking, and I actually picked up a copper amulet of strength, which you can see right here, which I do not want to transmogrify uh, because I want to equip it. So you just say close, and then now you can look at these things. I'm going to immediately um, move it to my inventory. And I always just move stuff to my inventory before I equip it. There's also this great sword, which is super nice, but I'm using... Um, axes, and given that, I'm going to move it to my inventory, but, well, you know what the real problem with this is. It's not that it's a sword or anything like that, um, It because swords, in this game, it's not as punishing for weapon type, because I have weapon mastery to govern uh, a wider range of weapons, like in Caves of Cud or Dwarf uh, I'm sorry, uh, Dungeon Crawl Stone Soup. There's a really an emphasis on, like, a particular type of weapon that you need to train. And for this right now, um, I have a broader category to do that. But the real problem is that I would lose my shield. And that would turn off block and shield slam and stuff like that. So I don't really care about that at the moment. And um, my axe is magical and all the rest of these items are in white text which means effectively not magical so i'm just going to push escape and it turns that into money for us we're up to eight gold and i'm actually going to bebop right back up the steps because i want to mess with my equipment all right so i'm going to push i to go into my inventory now check this out this uh, uh, amulet of strength okay just gives us plus two strength and we don't have anything in our amulet slot on our paper doll. You can see that right here. It's empty. So this is just a positive plus two for us, right? So before I equip it, though, I am going to just open my character screen with C. And then I will um, put this on and I'm going to wear it. And I'm going to now open my character screen. And you will see, okay, that my strength has gone up by two here. Uh, so I have a base strength of 21 and a modified strength of 27. By the way, that's what these slashes mean. Uh, so this web, this item does not raise my base strength. It adds on to that. So there is a, two separate sections for that uh, that you can see. Now, if I go into attack, look, it just tells me, hey, two strength, you know what that does? It gives me plus two damage. Um, and it also even helps my shield do more damage with shield-based attacks. And it raises our physical power does it do anything else for us not really but when i go back here into my talents you can see weapon mastery um again just reiterating this governs swords axes and maces and combat accuracy governs all melee and ranged um or i'm sorry unarmed melee and ranged weapons so i could use a sword if i found one that was one-handed and really good but right now i just haven't seen that yet so I'm going to push escape, and we're rolling. Now let's go back down. Okay, I'm going to push Z to auto-explore, and right away, sweet fancy Moses, look who we found. We found Brotok the Reaver, who's a humanoid orc, and his name is in orange. And that means, as you can see with his rank, this dude is a boss, like a boss, right? And so that means, like, this is the guy that we need to kill in this area, to complete the objective uh, for the quest that we have, Escape for Rechnor. And most of the areas or quests in this game will have some kind of boss monster that you need to fight, and we found it, all right? So here we are, and it's time to go. So when you see a boss monster, it's just time to use everything you got. Like, we need to pop every ability that we've got. We can't, um, we can charge right now, but I don't actually want to. I'm going to push block. And I'm going to turn on Resilience of the Dwarves. And now, um, I actually was able to charge in because he didn't move. So, I did all of my special abilities. I did block, I turned it on, 
and I turned on Resilience of the Dwarves, okay? And, um, oops, wrong button. Uh, what happens now is that you can see that this dude has been wrecked and he is dazed and he has been counterattacked. So um, we charged in, and remember that we have a chance to daze with um, our charge, our rush attack. So we rush in, charge in. Different games call this ability different things. It's rush in this game. Let me be specific. And um, it can daze for three turns if it hits, and we did hit, and we did daze. So we've got three turns of daze on this dude. And then what happened is um, he cast Virulent Strike and then he has like some kind of acid, acid Splash. He missed us, by the way, with all four instances of that ability. And then he tried to splash us with Acid and we blocked it completely. So we got a Counter Strike on him and his Virulent Strike uh, was a Infusion. So that was used. Now, what I want to do is um, I'm going to click on him. I'm sorry, I'm going to actually right-click on him, and I'm going to inspect him. And just as a reminder, like, if I mouse over the current effects, I can see what does Days do again. It says renders him unable to move. It halves all the damage he does. It, his defense, his saves, his accuracy, spell mind, and physical power are all halved for three turns. Um, but if we damage him at all, it'll remove the Days. So, you know, this is a major effect, and uh, you can use this to your advantage. Like, if they're dazed, you can turn on an infusion to heal you over time and know that um, even if you get hit, it'll be for half damage. So you can buy some time for yourself to heal back up or do some other abilities uh, if you want while they're dazed and then wait to hit them, all right? But we also got the Counter-Strike, which means um, we're going to inflict double damage. And so that's tremendous. Now remember, you can come in here and you can see, like, what does this person have? They have Wild Infusion, so um, they're going to be healing themselves probably at some point. Viral Disease is the ability they tried to get us with. They've got Acid Blood. Um, so it says, when do we get hit, we just take Acid Damage. So just expect us to take Acid Damage. They have Corrupted Strength, um, which they can deal wield, dual wield any type of one-handed weapon, all right? And then they have Carrier, which means they're good against disease, all right? Um, and this is their activated ability here, Virulent Strike. Actually, no, Virulent Disease is passive. Virulent Strike is the activated ability that they used on us, all right? So in general, they have 438 life, but they're already down to 375, okay? And um, that is because when we charged in, we did 63 damage. 14% uh, of this person's life. And so now what we're going to do is we're going to shield pummel, okay? And we missed, but then we hit for 44 damage. And um, he's receiving healing from me because of... Uh, Mm, he must have some kind of ability that heals him. Maybe that was his disease ability uh, that is allowing him to heal a little bit. Uh, but that's fine, whatever. I was going to say, is it this? Is it my totem? But no, I didn't even use this. So anyway, um, this is completely fine. Because now Norgon is up in melee with this dude. And so we can just clean him out. So I'm just going to hit him. And we lose our spell shock to debuff. We're still acid splashed. Um, but this guy's down to 62% health, and we are fine on health. I'm going to hit him again. 55% health. And this is basically how you fight a boss in this game, or any difficult enemy. When you're on them, okay, what you really, really want to do is make sure that you just take it slow, go nice and slow, turn by turn, so that you use your abilities at the right time that you need to use and you don't rush it and you don't miss an opportunity or wait too long to do something like, oh, I don't know, heal yourself, uh, which is 
obviously vital. So let's go ahead and jump back into this guy in one turn. Block is going to be off cooldown, so I'm going to hit him again. And he's down to 43% health. I'm going to block. We immediately get Counter-Strike ready, and we hit him, and he's down to 22% health. Now, he has um, been using some bigger abilities on us, okay? So... This isn't great, you know, in the sense that uh, we're spell-shocked. We, we have a disease um, which reduces our strength, and it does blight damage over time. So that's a shame. And we could definitely just uh, use one of our infusions to get rid of that. But I think our energy would be better spent just killing this guy. So I'm going to just use shield um, pummel. And he's down to 4% and got him. So we defeated him. Now, you'll notice immediately, uh, this is something really cool in the game. It's, uh, this hasn't been a factor yet, really. Uh, but if you level up, you heal to full or you heal, you know... Uh, I, I think I healed up, and then I took this damage over time or something. But you heal up, okay? Uh, so you regenerate. Like, I got all my stamina back. I got all my health back, which is beautiful. And another thing that you can consider, that guy gave us so much experience that we're 36% of the way to the next level after getting that, all right? So now we completed this quest, and you just click on this, and it will tell you um, that this is our quest, and we've finished it. So now we're trying to get back to the Iron Council to tell them what has happened here. So I'm just going to push escape. And I'm going to uh, click on this so that we can level our character up. And woo. Did we level up twice there? Let me look at this. Welcome to... Yeah, we did. Well, that guy gave us so much experience. We leveled up to four and then to five. And then we're 36% of the way on to six. Yeah, I was going to say because we have so many... Uh, skill points to use. Look at this. We have six stat points, three class points, and, and a generic point. Holy smokes. How nice is that? All right. We're going to go one, two, three, four, like always, and then we're going to put in a little bit of constitution. Now, uh, we met a threshold right here for unflinching resolve in our generic point. So, uh, what this means is that each turn, we have a percentage chance to recover from a single stun effect. And I'm going to take this, I think. Actually, no, I'm not. It's an amazing ability, and we're going to get it soon. Uh, but I'm going to take this ability first, and let me explain it. I'm going to snatch up the ability for uh, weapons mastery right here because um, it gives you... I'm sorry. Not weapons mastery. Here it is, combat accuracy. This increases our um, accuracy by 16, going from uh, talent level 1 to 2. And accuracy is enormous. Like, if you miss, that is punishing and can result in you dying. And even though this is a great sustain ability and can save you, it's better most of the time to kill the enemy. Uh, than to sustain in the in some of these ways. So we want to like focus on killing them first. So I'm going to take this just to be more accurate. Now, um, you'll notice that we have opened up the ability to get some of these tier two um, talents. Okay, so we could get repost, we could get repulsion, precise strikes, or fast metabolism. And let's talk about what these do. So repost. Um, improves it's a passive ability okay and it improves the ability to perform counter strikes after blocks in the following ways um so even it says allows counter strike after incomplete blocks so if we use block um but we don't block for full we can still get the counter strike which is very nice and it increases the number of counter strikes you can perform on a target while they're vulnerable now at first it's one but once you get to level four it goes up to two and it increases the crit chance of counter-strikes by uh, a large percentage, uh, you know, 13%, from 0 to 13, which is great. And it scales with dexterity, which we're not really pumping. Um, Repulsion is a activated ability with a 10-turn cooldown. It's instantaneous travel speed, um, and it takes one turn with our shield, 
and we smash our shield into the face of all adjacent foes. So it's like an AoE ability. Uh, you can see that by the arrows on the icon. So all adjacent foes, right, will take shield damage and get knocked back. So this is a beautiful ability in some ways for getting out of a jam. And it does a bunch of damage, and it knocks them back really, really far. And it dazes them, okay? So there's some great things about this ability. Um, and the first thing you want to think about it, like, is, wait a minute, I need to be in melee. And if I knock them back, like, if I'm on a spellcaster and I decide to knock them back, well, now they are far away from me and they can just rain on me with, like, their ranged attack. That's terrible. Well, check this out. Number one, it dazes them, so that's 50% damage. Number two, they can't run, okay? And then number three, it says, if known, activating this talent will refresh your rush cooldown if the attack hits. So if this works and they get moved back, rush will automatically come off of cooldown, and then you can just use rush. And remember, rush is instant... Uh, it, it takes one turn, um, but it's instantaneous travel. So, you know, you might get hit once for, for half damage while you do this, but then um, you'll daze them again and close the distance and um, get to hit for 120%. So this isn't that bad even on a single target, all right? This is actually a really good ability, and if you get swarmed, you can just knock back and run away uh, because they'll be rooted in place for a few turns if you hit and they get dazed. So if you hit and they get dazed, then they will be rooted in place and you can just run away. That's very nice. Precise Strikes um, reduces, uh, I'm sorry, uh, you focus your strike, reducing your attack speed by 10% and increasing your accuracy and critical chance, okay? So this is also extremely good. Now, for the most part, um, I'm going to say you want to have active abilities first over passive abilities, unless the passive ability is tremendous, because usually active abilities um, give you more of a chance to win, to survive, to kill things, because they have a cooldown, but, you know, just having them at some level gives you more options, um, and can really be more of an impact up front. Luckily for us, we've got three class points to put out. So, um, the last ability here is Fast Metabolism, which, um, allows you to regenerate life faster per turn, and this is also amazing. So all of these abilities are actually really good. I'm going to take Repulsion right away because it's activated, and it'll give us this knockback. I'm actually going to take Repost as well because just one level of Repost means that um, we get to Counter-Strike even after an incomplete block. So if they do a bunch of damage and we were blocking um, and some gets through, we still get to do double damage. And we could crit them easier to, like, blow them up. So that's very good. And then Precise Strikes, I'm going to take just one level in this, okay? Um, because for one point, it's Accuracy 9, Attack Speed 10%, and Crit Chance by 5. I don't think I'm going to be pumping this up too much more, because I'm not, like, investing heavily in Dexterity, although we could change that. But for now, that initial investment is enormous on this ability. So I'm happy with this, but do whatever you want. You know, if you feel like putting your points into fast metabolism or leveling up some of these tier one talents instead, then rock out. That's great. Um, this is just what I feel like doing right now. I'm going to push escape and I'm going to accept the changes. Now the real fun part, okay? By the way, uh, just for amusement, we have Weakness and we have Acid Splash. Let's go ahead and use our Wild Infusion um, on ourselves, and you will notice, okay, um, it does not cure either of these because this is a magical effect, and this is an, um, these are both magical, so that didn't help, right? Um, or we can use Healing to get rid of a disease effect. So now we got rid of disease. Acid Splash is magical and it's gonna stay there. But it's good to experiment with these things and see what they work on and what they don't so you can learn it. Because if you were counting right there on the Wild Infusion to get rid of that disease, it doesn't do that. We're gonna need something else to get rid of magical um, status debuffs or effects because we don't have that at the moment, right? So we did have 
healing to get rid of the disease and the damage over time. But that's all we got. All right. Um, now, I'm going to walk onto this tile right here. And this is the treasure pile from the boss. Let's see what we got. So first of all, we got a mirror image rune. Magical runes may be inscribed onto your body, granting you an on-demand spell talent. Okay. And uh, let's say great. So we'll just, you know, kind of uh, click on this. We need to push escape, actually. Okay. And then we found a rod of recall, which we can use to get out. So we're going to say great. And uh, we're going to look at this. Now, this item is basically like lets you teleport out of the place that you're in, but it has a long time before it goes into effect, so you can't really use it to get away from a battle. Um, it, it's too slow for that, but it's a, it's a time saver later. It's a quality of life thing. All right, and we're just going to push escape, and I'm going to go into my inventory and actually see what we picked up. So, for example, um, oh, look at this. We got this Iron Mail Armor of Ayal. It's a, our first blue item, okay? And this is an item that we got from the boss. We got some Elm Arrows. We also got this Iron Mail Armor of Cold Resistance, all right? And here is the Mirror Image Rune, okay? So this would be something we would inscribe on ourselves. And what does this do? It creates up to three images of ourselves that taunt nearby enemies each turn. And immediately after being summoned, only one can be created per enemy in radius uh, 10, with the first being created near the closest enemy. They get all our life, resistance, and armor. All right, so this is a really, really nice ability to get away from something, right? If we wanted to use this, uh, we could have this and, like summon this to distract enemies we could go kill the enemy that's distracted at the time um and take less damage ourselves or we could use this to like as a scapegoat to get away from a fight that we were losing so this is very tempting um and then we also got okay a regeneration infusion and a shielding rune and we can look at all of these infusions to see if we want to replace one of our current infusions. Even this one, it's going to um, have to replace one of our current infusions. So we're going to have to make some choices about that. I'm going to take out all of the infusions um, oops, that are in uh, the transmog chest. I'm just going to move it to my inventory. I'm going to move this to my inventory. And we also got this balanced iron dagger of massacre. Um... Oh, I misspoke. Some of that stuff that I was reading off, that wasn't from the boss. The stuff from the boss went right into my chest, by the way. And that's always a great way to check for your most recently collected items. Um, you can either look at it in the log to see what you've found, or uh, and or you can go into your transmog chest. Now, this item right here might be good, but it requires Dexterity 11, which we don't have. So, no thank you. All right, so I'm going to push Escape. And I think what I want to do is immediately check out this armor. So, this armor would give us, if we put it on, five less armor, but it gives us 24 life, two life regen, and plus 11 healing, all right? So this gives you like a nice big nine armor, which is really, really cool, but this thing gives me 24 hit points, which is significant, about 10% of my life, and it regenerates two per turn, and it helps you heal more. Um, so I think I want to equip this uh, right now. So I'm just going to wear this, okay? And if I go into my character screen, you can see, you know, like what has happened uh, with my character, okay? So my armor hardiness has gone down. My armor has gone down. Um, but in general, if I look at my life um, and my uh, regeneration, it's gone up by two. My healing mod went up. Uh, and my life uh, went up as well. So... You know, that's something for you to consider. I like having more hit points at this point and the ability to regenerate. It's fantastic. All right. Anything else that I want? Cooldown is 24 on this. And these things are like, they're not one shot and they're dead. I mean, it's going to get all of my hit points. So I'm actually going to use this and I'm going to replace, okay, um, the 
wild infusion. And so now I don't have a wild infusion. What I have is a mirror image, a regeneration, and a healing. Okay, and I'm just going to uh, push R to kind of rest for a bit. And I'm going to rest again until everything is off of cooldown. And now here we go. Now look, here's precise strikes, okay? So this ab ability we got, precise strikes, is going to be sustained. And I'm going to turn it on. And it's going to take 30 stamina, just like shield wall. And so I'm going to drag this ability over to our other sustained ability. And this is our rod of recall. I like to have rod of recall way over here to the right. So we also got repulsion. Okay, and I'm going to put this over here uh, with my kind of in-combat abilities. I like to put Rush over off by itself. All right, fantastic. So um, I can push Z, and let's auto-explore this level and see what we've got. Now, do we want to bounce out of here, or do we want to keep exploring, right? Um, let's go down and it's going to ask us about all of these items that we got here. Uh, let me say right now, uh, iron gauntlets. I don't have any gauntlets on, uh, so I want that. So move it to my inventory. I don't have a hat on, so um, move that. Move both of these hats to my inventory. And uh, this is a long sword. Yeah, move it to my inventory. Let me, let me see what that's like. And then we're going to push escape. And we made it. So here we are. Rechnor is lost. It, we completed it, and Norgan says, Thank you, Dr. Incompetent. We both survived for the wealth of the Empire. I will bring them the news and then rest. I do not think I want to see death so closely for some time now. Farewell. For the Empire. Take care. So we now have a new quest called Into the Darkness. And this is... Um, a quest that just about every character will get uh, when you start out, which is telling you places that you can go, okay? And we got this quest um, fro from below it devours, okay? So we have two quests. So Into the Darkness is a quest where it's, it's telling you, um, it says it's time to explore some new places, dark, forgotten, and dangerous ones. And it's giving you a recommendation on where to go next. And that's important because this is an open world roguelike. And it might not have seemed like that in the dungeon, but you'll see in a bit when we leave this place and go out to the world map, we can just free range and explore where we like for the most part. And this is giving us a kind of guide for how to do that. And it's even listing them in a pretty reasonable order that we want to do those things in. Okay, so that is there for us. And we got from below it devours, which says you escape from Rechnor. Um, your escape got your heart pounding and your desire for wealth and power increased tenfold. Maybe it is time for you to start an adventurer's career. Deep below the Iron Throne Mountains lies the Deep Below. It's been long sealed away, but still, from time to time, adventurers go there looking for wealth. None that you know of have come back yet, but you did survive, Rechnor. You are great. Well, thank you. How nice is that? Boost our confidence a little bit. All right, so that is another quest that we're going to work on. And um, in all probability, we're going to do these in the order that they present. We're going to do this quest first, and this is kind of like our... Um, background character beginning quest part two uh, and the these quests are different based on where you start um, and then this quest is shared all right between different characters that you will see so very good I'm gonna push escape and we're gonna say take care um, for the Empire and it says, uh, we got a new achievement. Squad mate escaped from Rechnor alive with Norgon. So Norgon made it. We got an achievement for doing that. And now Norgon is out of our party. Up here in the top, you will see that it, there is no longer my portrait and Norgon's portrait. It is just my information. He's gone. So now we are truly by ourselves. All right. Well, we need to explore the Iron Council, this dwarven starting city and then begin the next part of our quest line, get into shopping, 
uh, further enhance our character and explore what this game has to offer. And we'll get into that next time. I think this is a great place to end this third episode of the tutorial. Um, we've leveled up more. We're getting abilities. We're putting them around. We fought a boss. We completed some quests. We're doing really, really well with this character. I want to thank you all so much for watching. I hope you have an excellent evening or day. If you have any questions, please put those in the comments below. Remember, there is a full series for this guide, so you can go back to the beginning of the playlist and watch from the start. And also, I have a full Let's Play of uh, Tales of Magile, so you can see me doing different characters, getting farther into different parts of the game with different backgrounds and classes if you're interested. Take care, everybody.